Welcome to the Third Man Fuzzatron build video. Here are some tools you're going to need for the build. Wire strippers. Diagonal cutters. Small needle nose pliers. One mini screwdriver. Five and one screwdriver. Simple multimeter. An adjustable wrench. Rosin core solder. Soldering iron. 25 to 30 watts recommended. Now let's dump out the components and verify all the parts are there. First, we have the chassis box and bottom cover plate. Four 632 screws. Next, we have the sticker pack and the Fuzzatron instruction manual download QR code. The foot switch. The input jack which has three solder lugs and two spring tabs, and the output jack that has two solder lugs and one spring tab. The two potentiometers, the B50K and the B500K. Note that the uh, labeling is right here on the top of the pot. The two knobs, one for tone, one for volume. The external power jack and nine volt plug. A pack of 11 color-coded wires, four stick-on rubber feet, and two zip ties. Two of the 0 .0022 microfarad polyester capacitors, two of the 0 .047 microfarad polyester capacitors, four of the 330k ohm resistors, two of the 2N3566 silicon transistors, and finally we have one Fuzzatron printed circuit board. Now that we've verified that we have all the components present, let's start building the circuit board. Let's start with the resistors. Bend the resistor leads down right at the edge of the resistor. Locate R1 on the circuit board and slide the resistor on, pushing it all the way down. Next, flip the circuit board over. Bend the leads out slightly. This keeps the resistor flush against the top. Repeat this process for the rest of the resistors. Bend them down, find R2 on the circuit board, insert the resistor and push it all the way down. Next we'll do R3. And R4. Now the good thing about this kit is that all of the resistors are the same value, so you can't put them in the wrong spot. Next, hold the resistors in place and flip the circuit board over and bend the leads out slightly on each resistor to hold them in place. Next, we're going to solder the resistors in place. At this stage, I like to solder one side of each resistor and then double check that they're flush against the circuit board. Sometimes they rise up and, and look unsightly. First, flow some solder onto the edge of the resistor. Flip the circuit board over and check to make sure that the resistors are flush. If they are, solder the rest of the leads. Now take your diagonal cutters and trim the leads flush against the circuit board. Make sure you aim them away from you because these leads sometimes fly when you clip them. When you're finished, the top should look like this. And the foil side should look like this. Now is a good time to make sure that your solder joints are clean and that you haven't bridged any pads. 
Next, let's solder the transistors into the circuit board. The leads on the transistors are arranged in a triangular pattern, and they only fit one way into the circuit board. Slide the transistor through. Don't worry, both transistors are the same, so you can put them in either location. Slide them through, flip the circuit board over, and solder one lead to the back of the circuit board on each transistor. Flip the circuit board over and make sure that the transistors are flush against the PCB. If not, reheat the single solder joint and push the transistor flush. Okay, solder in the rest of the leads. Once you're done soldering, trim off the leads close to the circuit board. Make sure that you clean the leads off the back. When you're finished soldering in the transistors, the top should look like this, and the back should look like this. Once again, check to make sure that you haven't bridged any solder joints. Okay, next, we're going to add the capacitors to the circuit board, and I always start with these 0.047 microfarad capacitors. Find their location, C1, and these should just slide right down into the circuit board. And C2. Flip the board over, solder one lead of each one of these in place. And make sure that they're positioned correctly on the top. And if they are, flip it over and solder the other two leads. This is just fiddly. Trim off those leads. When you're finished with this step, the top of the circuit board should look like this. And the back of the circuit board should look like this. We're going to do the final step of assembly for the circuit board. We're going to find the 0 0.0022 microfarad capacitors, and we're going to install them onto the circuit board. Find the position C3, and slide one of the capacitors in place. Next, find the position of C4 right next door to that. and mount the capacitor. Next, flip the circuit board over and solder one lead in on each of the capacitors. Flip the board back over and make sure your capacitors are positioned like this and finish the soldering. Trim off the leads and save one of these leads trimmed off to the side. We're going to use it in a later step. I like to save a couple of them just in case. When you're finished, your circuit board should look like this. And the foil side should look like this.
Now that we've completed soldering the circuit board, let's set it aside for a minute and move on to wiring the chassis. First, locate your chassis box. Next, we're going to find the potentiometers. On the 500k potentiometer, bend the registration tab down, put it face down in the right hand hole on the top of the chassis box. Next, find the 50k pot, bend down the registration tab, and put it in the left hand hole on the top of the chassis box like this. Next, go to the wire pack and find the black wire, the brown wire, the orange wire, the yellow wire, and the short gray wire. First, we're going to start with the yellow wire. We're going to strip the end of that. We're going to put it into the spring and use it as a holder. And then we're going to tin the end of that wire. Tinning is the process of flowing solder onto a bare wire or a lead. It prevents oxidation and helps form a strong bond when soldering. I like to bend the wire over into like a little L, and then we're going to put that into the terminal T1, and we're going to solder that in place. Next, we're going to take the orange wire, strip the end, and put that into terminal T3 and solder it in place. Next, we'll find the short gray wire, and we'll strip both ends and tin both ends like this. Once you tin both ends, connect it to terminal T2. And solder it in place. All right, you've completed the wiring on your tone pot. And next, we're going to wire that to the volume pot. You're going to take the short gray wire and solder it to terminal V1, like this. Next. You're going to take the black wire, strip into one end, and you're going to solder that to terminal V2. And finally, find the brown wire, strip and tin one end, and we're going to solder this to terminal V3. All right, now at this point, I like to come back and trim off the leads and make sure that there's not any excess lead hanging over. 
which can sometimes bridge these terminals. Make sure that you don't clip the terminal off. All right. Let's take a look at the final assembly of the potentiometers. We can see that all of the wires are firmly attached and all the leads have been properly clipped. We're going to set this aside for now. We'll use it later. Next, we're going to install the hardware components into the chassis box, starting with the input and output jacks. First, locate the input jack. It's the jack with three solder lugs and two spring tabs. Remove the nut and washer. Install it on the left-hand side of the chassis box. and position the solder lugs facing up. Tighten down the nut using your adjustable wrench. Next, locate the output jack. It's the jack with two solder lugs and one spring tab. Install that in the right-hand hole in the chassis box. Position the tabs facing up and tighten it down using your adjustable wrench. You can verify that it's in the correct position because the word out is written above the hole. Next, locate the foot switch. Remove the nut and the plastic washer. Place it through the hole in the bottom of the chassis box and fasten it in place. Position the switch so that it faces forward and back in the center of the chassis box and make sure that it's aligned. Tighten it down. Now is a good time to check the continuity of all of these components to see if they're making good contact with the chassis box. This is essential to make a good ground connection. Set your multimeter for continuity. Put one lead on the center lug of the input jack and touch the other lead to the lug labeled green on the output jack. And you should hear a beep. Keep the lead on the center lug of the input jack and touch the threads of the switch. You should hear a beep. This means that you have good ground connection through the chassis box. Next, we're going to install the external power jack. Place the jack in through the outside of the chassis. Thread on the nut. Be careful because these threads are plastic. You don't want to get it cross-threaded. Carefully thread it on. Screw it all the way down and tighten it up. Once you have it tightened, you should you should position the leads like this. Now that we've installed the hardware in the chassis box, we're going to begin wiring the components. Next, we're going to connect the white wire from the lug labeled WHT on the input jack to lug 2 on the foot switch. Strip and tin the white wire. and solder it in place. Strip and tin the other end of the wire. and connect it to lug 2 on the pedal switch. You may need to 
crush down the wire just a little bit to fit through the hole, like so. Solder it in place. Trim off any excess lead after the solder cools. And route the wire down and under the power jack like this. Next, we're going to connect the blue wire to lug 3 on the switch. Strip and tin one end of the blue wire. Once again, you may have to flatten down that wire a little bit by pinching it with your needle nose pliers. Solder it in place. and trim off the excess lead once the solder cools. Leave the other end of this wire free. It's going to be connected to the circuit board in a later step. Next, find the violet wire. Strip and tin one end. and connect it to the lug labeled violet on the output jack. Solder it in place. Strip and tin the other end. and connect it to lug 5 on the pedal switch. Solder it in place. Trim off any excess lead. It's a good time to dump out some of your cutoffs and make sure that you don't have any solder blobs in the bottom of the chassis. Next, connect the green wire to the lug labeled green on the output jack. Strip and tin one end. Solder it in place. And then route the wire down and under the jack. You can strip and tin the other end of this wire right now. Leave that aside, it'll be connected to the circuit board in a later step. Locate one of the cutoff leads that you had from an earlier step and solder it on to lug six of the switch. I like to make a little hook in it. Stick it on terminal six. 
kind of crimp it on there. Solder it in place. Position it so that it sticks straight up. Next, locate the 9 volt battery lead. Solder the red wire of the battery lead to terminal J2 of the external power connector. There's a hole in the power connector that will allow you to thread the lead through. Thread it through and then solder it in place. Note, you don't have to tin either the red or the black wire from the battery lead. They come pre-tinned from the factory. Next, locate the pink wire. Strip and tin both ends of the pink wire. Connect the pink wire to the lug labeled J1 on the power connector. Solder it in place. Once the solder cools, trim off the excess lead and make sure that it doesn't stay inside the chassis box. Route the wire down and under the input jack, thread it through the hole in the lug labeled pink on the input jack. Next, take the black wire from the 9 volt battery connector and thread it through the same hole on the input jack. Solder both the black wire and the pink wire in place. Trim off any excess leads. Make sure they don't form on the chassis box. Locate the red wire and strip and tin one end. Connect the wire to lug J3 on the external power jack and solder it in place. Make sure to trim off any excess lead. You may need to bend the tab a little bit. Make sure not to clip any of the other wires. Next, grab the potentiometers that you assembled earlier, remove the nuts and washers, Install the potentiometers face down in the bottom of the chassis box. With the 50K on the left and the 500K on the right. Make sure you don't pinch any other wires underneath them. Flip the box over. Put your washers around the shaft and tighten down the nuts. Make sure that the lugs face down towards the bottom of the chassis box like so. 
take your adjustable wrench and tighten down the nuts, firmly tighten down the nuts. Now's a good time to check the continuity of the chassis of the pots, making ground connection to the chassis box. Set your multimeter for continuity. Place one lead on the metal housing of each pot and listen for a tone. If you get a tone, you know that you've made contact through the chassis and your ground is complete. Now, strip and tin the end of the black wire coming from lug V2 on the 50K pot. Route it under the short gray wire that connects the two pots together and under the white wire already connected to pin three on the switch. and connect it to lug four on the switch. Solder it in place. Next, we're gonna wire in the circuit board. To start off, strip and tin the end of the red wire the end of the blue wire, the yellow, the brown, and the orange. You may need to trim a little of the end of each wire. I like to cut them on kind of a bias on an angle. Make sure that none of the cutoffs fall down inside of the chassis box. Okay, now we're ready to wire in the circuit board. Connect the orange wire from lug T3 of the 500k pot to the output 1 on the PCB. Flip the circuit board over and solder the wire in place. Next, connect the yellow wire from lug T2 of the 500k pot to the output 2 on the PCB. You may need to reheat the solder, the tinning on the wire. Flip the circuit board over and solder the wire in place. trim off any excess leads and make sure that they don't fall back into the chassis box. Next, connect the brown wire from lug V3 on the 50K pot to one of the ground holes on the PCB. Once again, you may need to heat up the end of the wire just a little bit. There are two ground positions. Connect it to one. Flip the circuit board over. Solder it in place. Next, connect the green wire from the output jack to the other hole labeled ground on the PCB. Solder it in place. 
Connect the blue wire from the foot switch to the hole labeled in on the PCB. Solder it in place. Trim off any excess. Finally, connect the red wire from the external power jack to the hole labeled plus 9 volt on the PCB. And that's going to be in between the yellow and the orange wire. Trim off any excess. Next, you're going to install the PCB and secure it to the pedal switch. But before we do, flip it over and make sure that you don't have any stray leads, wire strands, or solder blobs shorting any of the contacts on the bottom. Sometimes it's a good idea to take a toothbrush and brush down this side of the circuit board. If all looks good, flip the board over, thread the hole on the top of the board, through the cutoff lead and down onto the switch. Pressing the circuit board down, make sure that you don't have any wires positioned behind it and make sure that it fits snug against the edge of the chassis box. Bend this lead over. and connect it to lug one on the foot switch. This is a little bit difficult, but it can be done. It's a tiny bit fiddly. There we go. I like to fold the lead around and solder it in place. Next, you're going to push the circuit board up against the edge of the chassis box, making sure that it's square and flat. And then you're going to fill this hole with solder. And that will hold your circuit board in place. Next, let's secure these wires in place and make sure that it all looks neat and tidy. Find one of the zip ties, run it down under your wires, bundle them all together, and zip it in place. Trim off the excess zip tie and discard it. Okay, locate the other zip tie, and we're going to zip tie this battery lead in position. Thread it down under your battery lead. And zip tie it in place. Trim off the excess lead. And discard it.
Now that you've completed the inside of your Fuzzitron, it's a good time to install a battery. Place the battery flat in the bottom of the chassis and grab the bottom plate. Note that the angle of the bottom plate faces the top of the chassis box. Slide it down in to the chassis. You may need to spread the sides apart just a little bit and line up the holes. Find the four 632 screws and screw them in to the chassis box. Start with the bottom two. Don't tighten them all the way. The Fuzzitron chassis box has been designed to hinge open from the top to give you access to the battery. You can simply close it and then tighten down these screws to lock it in place. All right, it's a good time to check the continuity at the bottom of the chassis box as well. So bring out your multimeter one last time. Turn it on to continuity. Let's test to make sure that the bottom of the chassis is making good ground connection. Place one lead on the bottom of the chassis box and the other on one of the jacks, the outside of the input jack, and listen for a beep. All right, find the four stick-on rubber feet Peel them off, press them into the corners of the bottom plate, like so. All right, next find the knobs that are going to go on the pots. And they're the same for tone and volume. Rotate the pots all the way to the left, counterclockwise. On the side of the knob, there's going to be a set screw. You're going to need to take your little mini screwdriver and back that out. But you don't want to back it out all the way. You can look inside of the bottom of the knob and see if that screw is backed off enough and slide it down under the shaft of the pot. Register it with the number one pointing down. Tighten the screw. Once the screw is tightened, just double check that it rotates freely. Do the same with the other one. Back out the screw. Locate it on the pot shaft and tighten it down. You shouldn't be able to turn them backwards at all counterclockwise. Double check to make sure that they rotate freely. We've provided an amazing sticker pack that allows you to customize your pedal any way that you like. The volume is on the right. Congratulations, you've now completed your Fuzzitron pedal kit.